Wow, I'm feeling so inspired, Chef Toomey, and I hope that you at home are feeling inspired as well. Now, before we get started into this next recipe, we're asking you, what are some of your favorite plants to grow in the garden? Head over to our social media pages and use the hashtag Afternoon Express. Girl, are you ready for this next one? I'm ready for the next one because I want to, I want to celebrate the fruits <laughs> that, that we're like, talking about today. But I also just want to have fun. I think this is one of the few recipes where you can have fun. No, for sure. And you know, winter is usually a time where we spoil ourselves with decadent desserts mm. and puddings. And since today is all about cooking from gardens, we're here to show you how to make the perfect winter fruit pavlova using seasonal fruit and edible flowers. I'm loving that fact that when we talk about pavlova, it's a carrier. So you could literally just make your, your meringue, your pavlova, and then top it with literally whatever you have in your fridge. No, for sure. But before we get started, to me, take a step back. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I want you to be in first position. And we're going to demi plie, girl. And we're going to bring it back up. And you understand that these joints are not the same anymore. <laughs> now, okay. for, for everyone wondering why I'm, you know, acting the fool. So Pavlova was also actually named after Anna Pavlova, who was a ballet dancer. So yeah. there you go, there you go. So we're going to get started, to me. <laughs> now, I, you know, I, I like to, to just make it easy for you here. I know so you. you're just going to be decorating while I head over to, to starting the Pavlova. Okay. Now, we're doing a double boiler method because this is a Swiss meringue base. Okay. So what that means is we've got our, our egg whites and we've got our sugar in mm -hmm. the bowl. Gently heat that up. And what you want to do is sort of heat that up until the sugar fully dissolves to me. Oh, okay. okay. So you want to do this low and slow because you don't want the egg whites to burn or to cook, right? So keep, keep whisking it or keep mm -hmm. stirring it, okay? And the best way to know when it's actually dissolved is just to pull up a little bit in your fingers, between your fingers, mm -hmm. and you can sort of still feel those um, sugar granules, you know, okay. and you want to just keep going. And this is, we're doing the Swiss meringue today because it's such a stable meringue base. And what I'm going to add in here is a little bit of cream of tartar to okay. me. Now, cream of tartar and meringue are best friends. Okay. I saw them at the, at the shops earlier. <laughs> they were hanging out, you know. <laughs> and the cream of tartar, again, with whipping egg whites is always important because it keeps, keeps it nice and stable to me. Now, you want to just sort of do this low and slow again. Keep just checking. I can still feel a bit of the sugar granules there, okay. so keep working at it. But lucky for you, to me, I've got another bowl that we whisked up earlier. Okay. So once the sugar is dissolved, you remove it from the heat and you continue whisking it at a high speed until you develop nice and stiff peaks. And show me, I know we always joke because you're short, right? But today it's actually going to come in, in handy. Are you ready? It's not going to be Are you ready? <laughs> Mama, okay, yes, you worked it really well. <laughs> a, a great way to have fun in the kitchen to test if your meringues are stiff enough, if you invert it and it st stays in the bowl, you know it's ready. Now, we're not done yet. That's okay. not it. There's more. Not done yet. So you could bake this already, but that's more of a meringue. So it's oh. going to bake, you know, sort of hard and a bit chalky. So when you're making a pavlova, you need something to get that marshmallowy interior. Okay, because I wanted to actually mention something here that uh, how do you know if it's fully cooked and it's, it's perfect? Because I see here, when I touch it, it actually has a, I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah. It sounds slightly hollow, but it also does have a touch to it. So it is important to have that structure and the solidity from it. And that, I'm guessing that's what you meant where the, cast, the cream of tartar works with the sugar yes. for that stability, right? Exactly. And also baking is important when it comes to pavlova. Okay. Some people like to bake it for a longer period of time where it actually dries out completely. Mm. I like that marshmallowy, Scent. marshmallowy, you oh, know, okay. center, that juicy center. And what helps with that to me is a little bit of cornstarch. Okay and a little bit of vinegar. Is that okay? what you're adding now? So that's what I'm adding to our, our meringue that we've whip, whipped up. And a very important point to me, when you're working it into your meringue, I like to use a wooden spoon because, to me, the silicone sort of um, utensils tend to uh, have the, the fatty sort of you know, the fat sort of like oh, yes. doesn't really clean off the, Correct. you know, very quickly. Whereas a metal spoon, you can r run it under like a very hot water to get rid of all, 
all yes. of that fat. Because remember, meringues don't like any sort of fat. Yes, and that's why every time I've noticed when people make a meringue, they always mention to make sure you don't get any egg yolk into your egg white if it's going to be whipped because that fat content, even a little bit of it, would literally make a meringue fail, right? No, very, very important to me. What I also like to do is before I start, take a little bit of either vinegar or a little bit of a white alcohol. Mm -hmm. Using a, a paper towel, just wipe out your bowls before you get ah. the process started. Wipe your bowls, wipe your utensils, and that's a sure way of making sure that um, that you don't have any, um, you know, fat or anything that's going to deflate the meringue. So I'm just going to spoon this out to me and thanks you can keep whisking that we're going to make that one later you know <laughs> okay and obviously when it comes to whisking in like at this moment we are using a, um, a spatula yeah. to mix everything through we wouldn't be uh, using our whisk at this point no so uh, the idea is not to start whisking it you just really want that sugar to, to dissolve, dissolve nicely okay, okay so i'm going to just spread my meringue on there i'm going to add some chocolate and remember, we're baking this at a very low temperature. Okay. Okay, so about 140 degrees. So don't worry about the chocolate burning. It's going to just melt sort of nicely in our pavlova. So you're gonna get this into the oven for about an hour and a half. Okay. Turn your oven off completely and let it dry out in the oven until the oven cools down. Okay, perfect. Okay. That's lovely. It's important to know because some of us do like dessert, so it's great to know how you can make it from scratch. No, for sure. But I know that we had a lot of information here today, but remember we do have this recipe on our website. So head over to afternoonexpress.co.za for the full list of ingredients and make sure you go ahead and make yourself a winter pavlova. <laughs>